Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of Voice of Radio. So today, we need to take a look at a couple of new Stage 2 Pokemon, one of which I love the artwork, the other one of which I think has a real chance to be real good. Although, as always, taken in the context of a Stage 2 Pokemon, we'll explain as we go. So we're going to start off with Swampert here, because Swampert is the one that I do think has the potential to be a real top tier card. And our translation here comes from S Synchron over on Twitter, who did respond to a tweet from Antoine and gave the ability, and I am delighted. But I've seen a couple of my friends try and cobble this together. I've used Google Translate, etc. And it all tends to come out the same way. So I think we can feel pretty good about it. Now, in terms of the basics with Swampert, we've got 170 HP, which is on the high end for a stage two. Retreat cost of three, which is annoying, and a weakness to lightning, which is honestly fine. Pre-rotation, yeah, it's terrible, but we're not looking pre-rotation, so it's fine. And post-rotation, you got Tapu Coco V Max, which is a nice little fringe deck, but if you're worried about one fringe deck, I think you'll be okay. You are then a water Pokemon, which means you can accelerate energy with Frostmoth. You can be hitting weakness against things like Victini. So you hit a better weakness and you are being hit by. That's always a good thing. But it's the ability here which I'm particularly intrigued by. What we see is once during your turn, attach one fighting or water energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Cool. That is extra energy acceleration, and not only is it extra energy acceleration, but it's extra energy acceleration for two different types. So you can either go for water, or you can go for fighting. Now, obviously, when we're accelerating those energy, they are not made equal. Clearly, until we hit rotation 2022, you're not playing this over Frostmoth. This lets you accelerate one extra energy. Frostmoth, it lets you accelerate literally as many as you've got. So there's no competition, right? This is a stage two. Frostmoth is a stage one. This accelerates one energy. Frostmoth accelerates as many as you've got. There is absolutely no question here between this and Frostmoth. Frostmoth is better. But if we look ahead, and when we're looking at cars, we do need to look ahead. Remember that Frostmoth has got rotation mark D, and this has rotation mark E. So this will last one year longer in the game than Frostmoth, at which point we can talk more about it. But in terms of accelerating fighting energy, now we're kind of rolling. And this sounds good to me, ladies and gentlemen. This sounds good. Because fighting Pokemon are, are kind of starved for energy acceleration. Now we do have B, but B is pretty... Pretty extreme. B is not like, hey, have an extra little energy here or there. B is kind of an all or nothing card. You discard the top five cards of your deck, and any energy discarded can be attached to your bench fighting Pokemon in any way you like. Do bear in mind that is any energy, not just basic fighting, but it is only to your bench Pokemon and only to fighting Pokemon. And this is cool, but... It's pretty extreme. It's your support for the turn. You're discarding the top five cards of your hand. There's a lot going into it. Swampert here just attaches an energy, and that's kind of cool. But at this stage, I think we need to remind ourselves about the Colossal from Rebel Clash. Because Colossal says once during your turn, you may attach a fire and or fighting from your discard to your Pokemon in any way you like. So Colossal, okay, it's from the discard rather than the hand. Although, honestly, a lot of the time, my general ranking goes attaching from the deck is best, then discard, then hand. Because a lot of the time, you can get energy in the discard early, and then it's always there. Whereas hand, you've got to have it on the turn you need it. So all of a sudden, now Swampert's attaching one fighting energy from a hand as a stage two. Colossal's attaching one fighting energy and a fire from my discard as a stage two. And I'm sorry, but in terms of ability, I prefer Colossal. Because Colossal will get a fighting and a fire. And if I'm playing this, even if it's a fighting deck, I'm playing one or two random fire just to accelerate with Colossal. And I prefer attaching from the discard rather than the hand. Because like I say, I can bin it early with a professor's research and know it's always there. 
Whereas attaching from the hand, you've got to have that in hand right now. It's super awkward. So actually, yes, I like this ability. It's a cool ability. But for water, I'm using Frostmoth. It's way better. And for fighting, I'm using Colossal. It's not way better, but I do think it is a little better. Again, Swamp Up will last one year longer. And the combination of water and fighting might be something we see in the future. But as much as I like this ability, I think it's outclassed by other abilities we've got. As for the attack, one water, two colorless, 180. And it does 20 to each of your benched Pokemon. Now, in terms of energy, you've got itself. You've got Frostmoth. You'll be fine. I'm not worried about the energy. In terms of the damage, you're doing 180 doubles to 360. So if you're hitting for weakness, you'll get anything that's weak, even VMAXs like Victini or Center Scorch. And then, of course, you're hitting 180, which just so happens to be the perfect amount of damage to get those two prize support Pokemon like Crobat and Krikatune, which is kind of lovely. Not to mention you're getting basically every single prize Pokemon out there, which is cool. So damage-wise, it's nice, and you can pay the cost quite nicely. 20 damage to yourself isn't ideal, but there's plenty of Pokemon out there like Fampy that can take advantage of being damaged, so I'm not too worried about the self-damage on the bench either. It's just a Stage 2. And if I'm using a Stage 2, and probably then using a Stage 1 to accelerate energy as well, because Swampert, you can attach once from your hand, once with the ability, you're still short. The exception is if you're playing Twin Energy, then you can attach a Water as your attachment for the ability, and a Twin Energy as your attachment for the turn, and then you can legit get it going in one turn. But now you've got to draw into Water and Twin, which can be awkward. But it is absolutely possible. And I like it, it's just an awkward Stage 2. But it's good damage and it's easy to pay, so not a bad attack here. But I think I'm still going to have to give this free Wossies. It's not a bad card. It's a fun card. And incidentally, it's got a better attack than either Frostmoth or Colossal. But I don't think you're going to play it for the attack. You're going to play it for the ability. And I think there are other Pokemon that outpace it in terms of abilities. I'm sorry. Moving over to Levani here, we have a card that was revealed in Japanese, which means we go over to our good friend, the lovely Antoine Boulet, and Antoine fixes everything. Now, here we're at 130, which is not good for a stage two. Sure, it leaves you out of range of an Urshifu when you're on the bench. Hits 120 to two Pokemon, but still, 130 on a stage two ain't good enough. Retreat cost to one is nice and low. Weakness to fire is honestly fine. It's only Victina we're really worried about. And being a grass Pokemon means you're hitting little for weakness. I'm sorry. Does, although actually Umbreon, to be fair, Umbreon does look like it could be really good and you are hitting Umbreon for weakness here, so that's something to get excited about. And then, of course, we've got grass typing, which means you can search it out using stuff like Turf Field Stadium, which is actually a, a pretty big bonus. Now, in terms of attacks here, I mean, the damaging attack, one grass, two colorless, 120, no. I've told you how there's a 120, 130 divide. This is on the wrong side of it. There's going to be plenty of 130 Pokemon you don't KO. Yes, it will KO an Umbreon. No, it's not enough damage. And it's awkward attack cost. you got Cherim. Cherim will accelerate the energy. But if I'm using Cherim to put free grass energy onto a Pokemon, you better believe it ain't going to be this. It's going to be something like uh, Tapu Bulu, for instance, which hits 160 and is a basic Pokemon. Yeah. The headline attack, so to speak, is two colorless energy. Heal all damage from all of your bench Pokemon. Then shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it back into your hand. So you're basically talking about a hit and run Pokemon that heals all of your Pokemon completely. But it's your attack for the turn. And you've got to get a stage two Pokemon out. And it's, it's not ideal. The good news is it can be used for a twin energy, but it's still not ideal. And the thing is, we're, using, we're losing Lily's Pokedol when we hit the rotation. And that's what we want to be using here. So you essentially go into your hand, then use Lily's Pokedol, and then your opponent can't attack. And essentially, you use your attack for the turn. But in doing so, you try and cost your opponent an attack by popping a Lily's Pokedol in the active. And then you're completely healed and you go. 
I do like this as an emergency. Essentially, you get your Levani on the bench, and then your opponent can either gust it up and KO it, but then they're not dealing with your attacker, or they can try and deal with your attacker, but then you've got this healing potentially in the back ready to go. And that's cool. And then at the right time, out this comes, twin energy, heal everything. I don't think it's going to work very often. I think if it's really going to swing the game, your opponent will gust and KO it. I think it's awkward as a stage two. I'm honestly not loving it too much. It's one of those that, in theory, it's great. And there will be a couple of games, if you play this, there will be a couple games where this actually works. But there will be too many others where it doesn't. And on the games where it doesn't, you've just used a huge amount of your deck and you've achieved basically nothing. And this is not something to be, to be terribly excited about. And I'm sorry if that sounds mean. I'm still going to give it three wassies, although it is very much on the lower end of three wassies. Because I do think there is a little bit of potential here. I do think there are a couple things to get excited about. And it can swing a game. But it's a stage two. It's a little bit awkward. And I think that more often than not, it is going to end up being good in theory, but not work out. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Get us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing is always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.